Okay, here we go. <laughs> As Janet would say, Hey, what is up, you guys? This is Steffi, aka, in my humble opinion, we are back and we are coming back with a bang because today I am going to be talking about episodes one and two, also known as night one of the Janet Jackson documentary. That's right. Little old me here on this channel was able to get a screener for part one of the Janet Jackson docuseries. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. So Janet is a four part docuseries airing on Lifetime and A&E here in the United States about the life and career of mega superstar slash diva Janet Jackson. Not only does Janet participate in the documentary, but she along with her older brother, Randy Jackson serve as executive producers. Using archival and never before seen footage along with interviews both past and present, Janet is an exploration into how the legend came to be and the obstacles she had to overcome along the way. This docuseries was directed by Benjamin Hirsch, and like I said, the executive producers are Janet and Randy Jackson, along with Rick Murray, Brie Miranda Bryant, and Kevin McDonald. Now, I wanted to um, pause with Kevin McDonald for a second there because I'm not quite sure if this Kevin McDonald is the same Kevin McDonald that directed the Whitney Houston documentary entitled Whitney that came out in 2018. I was trying to, you know, look around on IMDb, but I really couldn't find anything. But it would be an interesting connection if he was involved with the Whitney Project as well as this Janet Project. So there are four episodes in this Janet Jackson extra extravaganza um, episodes one and two are airing tonight and episodes three and four will be airing tomorrow without commercial breaks each episode is about 42 ish minutes long and as of right now the time of recording this i've seen episodes one and two we the press did not get episodes three and four so after tonight we are going to be in the same boat but this video like i said i'm going to be talking about episodes one and two i'm going to try and keep it um as general as possible as spoiler free as possible but sometimes i may get into some details that you may or may not want to hear so just letting you guys know before you continue on watching this video. And if you don't want to watch it, you can just watch this video after um, watching the first two episodes. But before I continue, I just want to say a huge thank you to A&D for giving me early access to this docuseries. Just thank you so much for this opportunity. So normally the way I do reviews here on this channel is I talk about pros and cons and then I give my overall rating and review at the very end. But because I haven't seen the full docuseries, I'm not gonna be doing it that way. But instead, I will be talking about just different topics that I feel are necessary to talk about, at least for episodes one and two. So there will be like timestamps and you'll see the little like segments at the bottom of the screen here. But um, yeah, so I have my notes. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing I really wanted to talk about was the organization of this docuseries. I feel like if you are a huge Jackson family fan, you will really enjoy episode one because the Jackson family history does take up a good chunk of that first episode. It's important to set a context to who Janet's family was and also just understanding the family dynamics. But if you're more into Janet's career as a solo artist, episode two is probably gonna be more your speed. As a whole, at least in these first two episodes, it's a very chronologically told docuseries. They're not really jumping around to different time periods. And even if you don't know much about Janet Jackson's backstory, you're only like pretty familiar with her music, I feel like Watching this documentary is a good place to start if you want to know more about her because it really does feel like Janet Jackson 101 because you get a backstory to the Jackson family history in case you don't want to spend like a gazillion hours watching Jackson's An American Dream. I think the general public may not remember. They may not understand. Maybe, you know, some of us weren't even alive when all of this was happening. But because it's been quite some time, people often forget how instrumental and important the Jackson family were to music history and just American pop culture, especially during that time like they are so embedded that you don't even realize that a lot of like your current faves are literally benefiting off of the boundaries that <laughs> 
were broken by this family. So um, it's a nice reminder of remembering who the Jacksons are. All right, so the second point that I wanted to talk about was the pacing and this docuseries ability to build emotion. At the time of recording this, I've actually seen episodes one and two twice through because once I was just enjoying for me and then the second time through I was like taking notes. But I will say I was never bored while watching episodes one and two. Perhaps there's some bias in that because I am a fan and I care, but yeah, I was not bored. Now, I do want to say though I won't be surprised if some hardcore Jan fam stands feel like this is a bit rushed what this documentary is not is like an in-depth analytical exploration into every single album like if you want that this is not it so I'm just saying that right now so you could manage your expectations and you know you have to understand too like this is a four-part docuseries and it's Janet Jackson yes talking about her career but also talking about her personal life and there's a lot that happens on both ends of those spectrums so I'm just telling you guys that so you can manage your expectations yeah so back to the point I was making um this is a very emotional Docu series. And if you are a huge Janet fan and you feel kind of way every time you see like Janet get emotional or Janet start to cry, like have a box of tissue nearby or something because you might shed some tears. I will say the opening kind of like sequence moment in episode one is very emotional. The amount of times I said, oh my gosh, Janet, oh Janet, while like watching this. But I feel like the reason why, you know, it can feel very emotional is because of the score and the editing and those two things like coming together really well. One of my favorite sequences is in episode two when they talk about control and it's the sequence where they're showing Janet rehearsing in the dance studio with Paula Abdul and then also in the recording studio with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and they're kind of cutting back and forth and there's a really like emotional like stirring score in the background and you hear Paula Abdul talking and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis talking and even though like you may have seen that footage before there is something about the way that it is packaged together that it just really works on an emotional level Okay, so the third thing that I wanted to talk about is this docuseries really amazing ability to successfully build suspense. And they also have a really good episode and mid commercial break cliffhangers. So the cliffhanger cuts that happen like right before they go to commercial break or even at the very end of the episode are so good. Whoever edited this, they know where to cut to leave you wanting more. And also there were some cuts in there that were a bit foreboding that honestly stressed me out a little bit. And even things where I was like, oh yeah, that's absolutely like not true. I was like, wait, maybe it is true. <laughs> there is a certain rumor that is teased towards the end of episode one. And I was very confused and I started to worry if the rumor was actually true. That's how good they are at building suspense and cliffhangers. Okay, so the fourth thing that I really wanted to talk about is Joseph. Joseph Jackson. This is the patriarch of um, the Jackson family. For those of you guys who may not be familiar with the story of the Jacksons, Joseph was known to be a very strict disciplinarian. And in this documentary, Janet takes the stance that even though he was really strict, it was for a reason. And her and Randy openly admit that if it wasn't for Joseph, their family probably would have not been able to reach the level of successes that they did. Now, obviously, there's nine children in that family and they may all feel differently about it, but that's the stance that Janet is taking and she doesn't really waver in that belief. I am interested to see how other people will respond to Janet's assessment of her upbringing, especially since some of her other siblings have spoken out and said that that didn't really emotionally affect them too well. I'll be interested to see how, you know, the internet responds to that. Okay, the fifth topic that I want to talk about are the men in Janet's life. So she um, talks about James DeBarge, who 
was the first person that she married. And then she also talks about Rene Elizondo, who was the second person that she married after getting an annulment from James DeBarge. With regards to James, Janet actually gets very emotional, at least up until right now it's the only time she really asked the director to stop during like the whole james debarge section she talks about how subconsciously she finds herself being attracted to addicts and i feel like that is planting the seed for you know future relationships other relationships in her life um that she has so and then in regards to Rene elizondo i feel like he's a bit of a controversial person within the janet jackson fan community but what i will say is i feel like they're sort of like planting the seeds of even though he is clearly like very supportive of janet and he's super creative at the same time a bit controlling so we will see where that takes us in episode three Okay, so I wanted to talk about the archival footage. This note especially goes out to the Janet Jackson fans. Me personally, I haven't seen every single Janet Jackson piece of footage that exists, but I will say there was some footage that I did recognize, but there is also some footage in this documentary that is supposed to have never been seen before. Let me know if indeed that was true. The way they introduced this never before seen footage was pretty dramatic, if I do say so myself you know that dot 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 until now this footage was filmed by a certain person and i did ask my friend angie who is a huge janet jackson stan if um you know just in general have any janet jackson fans seen footage from this person before and she said no so let me know in the comment section below if by the time you're watching this video you've seen episodes one and two if that was indeed true Okay, and the last topic that I really want to talk about in regards to episodes one and two, but I'm sure won't be the last time I talk about this topic is, of course, MJ, Michael Jackson. So honestly, I was a bit surprised by how much Michael was brought up in episodes one and two. I don't want to say he's like an ominous shadow because that has like a negative connotation to it, but I will say there's definitely like an MJ presence throughout. Having not been alive during the 80s, I didn't realize how often Michael Jackson was brought up anytime Janet was doing anything, especially pre-Rhythm Nation. Because I was born in the 90s and I came of age in the 2000s, I came into a world where both Michael and Janet were huge stars. So it was very interesting for me to see Janet doing all these different interviews and the interviewer trying to sneak in a question about Michael. Uh, Cause I mean, she's Janet after all. I will say too, so the way this entire thing begins, you see this title card and they explain to you that Janet had a film crew following her since 2017 and that they stayed with her for like the next five years. So with that in mind, it's interesting to think that this film crew was with Janet around 2017, 2018. That's when the general public still seemed to favor Michael. And then a certain documentary came out in 2019 and then the tides dramatically turned. So I'm interested to see if that will be reflected in any way, especially come episode four, but we shall see. All right, so overall, what I can say as of right now, after having seen episodes one and two, is I really enjoyed part one of this Janet Jackson extravaganza. Janet Jackson as the subject matter of a docuseries is obviously important and noteworthy. In episode one, she is asked, why now? And she answers, because it needs to be done. Janet understands that her legacy is important and must be preserved, but more specifically, her story must be told on her own terms and in her own words. A gift in a lot of ways, when you think about all of the unauthorized, unfinished books and documentaries about her musical peers like Prince, Whitney Houston, and even her brother Michael. While some may criticize Janet, the interviewee, as reticent and guarded, in a lot of ways, watching this docuseries feels like Janet setting the record straight and coming to terms in real time with her past traumas. This was and still is a story about control, and Janet is doing it her way. So that's it. As of right now, my thoughts on episodes one and two. Now we're in the same boat. Haven't seen episodes three and four yet. I will try and do a separate review about episodes three and four. Four. But what I will say is I actually have a podcast called Diva Dailies, which is a podcast where we deconstruct divas on film, TV, and in music. And I am going to be recording two episodes about 
this Janet Jackson docuseries. And I'm going to be talking with my friend Angie, who um, has been a frequent co-host on that podcast. And she is a huge Janet Jackson stan. Like she is the Janet Jackson expert in my life. So if you are interested in hearing that conversation, please go check out um, Diva Dailies. That episode should be posted this Wednesday. It'll be about episodes one and two. And then the following Wednesday, I'm planning on episodes three and four being discussed. But yeah, just check us out. It's a good podcast, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed parts one and two and that you're gonna be watching parts three and four. And once again, I do have to say a huge thank you to A&D for giving me early access to this docuseries. It really means a lot to me to be included with traditional media in terms of press, especially because this YouTube channel is pretty small. Um, I really do appreciate this opportunity. So thank you so much. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. I will now leave you with some footage of me um, kind of losing my mind at my first Janet Jackson concert. Hopefully not my last. (laughs) 